We certainly made good time on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Are you getting in a hurry now that your trip's almost over? Oh, no. I mean... I mean, I'm really enjoying seeing the country. Well, uh, remember one thing. In this country, a woman has a right to change her mind. Now we're coming to another post house. Last stop before Philadelphia. Well, we'd have been here 180 years ago. We might still have eaten Philadelphia Scrapple and uh, cherry pie. But I doubt if we'd have been drinking iced coffee. No. There wouldn't have been this many people, I bet. No, you're right. Although the uh, roads were all pretty well traveled in 1776, bringing delegates to the Continental Congress. They came from all corners of the 13 colonies, by stage, by colonial coach, and by horseback. Men who were on their way to keep their date with history. And naturally, there were delegates from Boston to report firsthand on Massachusetts' answer to the stamp tax. A secret organization of patriots. Uh, we call them underground today. Sons of Liberty staged the famous Boston Tea Party. Disguised as Indians, they threw three shiploads of heavily taxed tea into the harbor. So the delegates were gathering in a building that still stands in Philadelphia. Their meetings were stormy and exciting. Some of the colonists felt they weren't being so badly treated by standards of the old country. But over here, the people were beginning to breathe the exhilarating air of freedom. It was a new idea in the world, and they liked it. But it was a dangerous idea to espouse. The signing of the Declaration of Independence, making all men free and equal. so large a signature, my friend. So John Bull may read my name without his spectacles. We must hang together, or else most assuredly we'll all hang separately. You can see that same Liberty Bell in Philadelphia today. In Independence Hall, where America became the first free nation on earth. Hey, I want to go get some chewing gum. Go ahead. We'd better get back to the bus. I imagine your son was a lot like that. A lot. I have an idea. You know, there are shrines and memorials to all our wars. America is still paying the price for liberty even to this year of 1900 and now. Let's get to the point. Gladly. I think we ought to take a short side trip, you and I. There's a bus waiting. Trust me. You'll be glad of it the rest of your life. All right. So it is that when the rest of the party rolls into Philadelphia, Schroeder and the friendly stranger are missing. And these two have a problem of their own growing more acute by the moment. Okay. I'll stick around while you phone him. Yes. Yes, dear. All right. Goodbye, Waldo. Did you tell him about us? I couldn't. Not just like that. Maybe that'll help you make up your mind. Thanks. It does. You and your football manners. So it is with confused emotions that Mary returns to New York. To her pleasant career girl routine. And to Waldo. Mary! 
Hello, Waldo. Welcome, thrice welcome. We better get out of here. Uh, I, I have something in this box for you. I'll take your luggage. Excuse us, please. I trust you feel completely rejuvenated. <clears throat> there are a great many things at the office that uh, require attention. What's the matter? Uh, Waldo, I've got to tell you something. Yes, my dear. Then I'll be going back to Philadelphia. To Philadelphia? Three o'clock, didn't you? He better be here at three. And he better sign that contract. He will. We'll need the money. Good news, honey. Graham, you could tell the old man. Mary. What, 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 what? what now, what kind of language is that? Yeah, but for Waldo. What about Waldo? Does that answer your question? The ring never belonged there in the first place. It belonged to my mother, really. I just switched it. Well, Bill Roberts, you've got the ball. Now carry it. This is the mysterious destination to which the stranger has lured Fred Schroeder. What connection is there between this bit of Pennsylvania countryside and far off Korea? I still don't know why you wanted me to come here. I wanted us both to come here because there's a message here we both need. What message? Who are you anyway? Come to think of it, I don't even know your name. Almost a hundred years ago when he came to Gettysburg in this very town. You're comfortable, Mr. President? Mrs. Wills and I want this night to be as easy for you as it will be memorable for us. That's very kind of you, Judge. I'm afraid they'll expect you to make a few remarks, Mr. President. I'd better save my few remarks for tomorrow. Is there anything else? No, uh, yes, there is something else. Would you request the band to play Dixie for me? Dixie? Mr. President. Dixie, sir? Somehow I think it will be a fitting thing at this time, in this place. Fellow citizens, the President is very tired, and he'd like to be excused until tomorrow. He asks that the band play Dixie. Dixie! What does he mean by that? Does he know that Gettysburg is in Pennsylvania? Why? Well, they seem to like it. Why not? It's a mighty fine tune. I think you can hear it here. Listen. I don't hear anything. I don't listen. Think... From beside that monument. That's where Abraham Lincoln stood to deliver his Gettysburg Address. You can hear the murmur of the crowd gathered before the speaker's platform. Now they're quieting now. He's coming forward. You can hear him now. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. That 
from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Did you hear that, Schroeder? Did you hear that? That was a message we both needed. These dead shall not have died in vain. They wonder sometimes, those who gave that last full measure of devotion, if the people who inherited this country are worth the sacrifice. Well, I've seen both now. I've seen the country and the people. They're worthy of each other. You've made me understand, too. You have made me proud. Proud and humble. I'm glad. Look after Jimmy, will you? I'll see you in Washington. Of course. And I want to thank... Jimmy, that's the tomb of the unknown soldier. The guard always there? Always. And over there lie other heroes, the unknown of the war between the states and other wars. Is this where we're supposed to meet him? I thought we might. He said he'd see us again. Come to think of it, he didn't say we'd see him. kind of strange, but nice. I wonder what he does. I don't know, Jimmy. But whatever it is, I have a feeling his job is done. And to think we never even knew his name. His name? Like the words of President Harding when he dedicated this spot, the name of him whose body lies here took flight with his imperishable soul. We know only that his death marks him with the everlasting glory of an American who died for his country. <laughs>